Hey guys, Cam back here in the uh, Battler Workshop and welcome. Well, it's blowing an absolute gale out the side and uh, it's gone very cold. Uh, here we are into uh, end of the start of spring, but um, yeah, got the jumper on the workshop, it's quite cool. Um, I just want to do a quick wrap up on the Sino digital readout that I have on the Victor Lathe and a couple of the issues that, well, one major issue that I did have with the unit and uh, trying to find information on how to solve that issue was very difficult. Um, I googled everywhere, couldn't uh, couldn't get an answer. And the issue I had was changing the readout on the cross slide from a diameter reading to a radius reading. In other words, I want one to one. So if I move one millimeter on the cross slide, I get a one millimeter readout on the DRO. And I tried everything uh, that I could think of to try and sort that out. As I said, I did a lot of googling. So changing resolutions. There was a uh, a lot of sequencing applications there to go through to try and get it to happen, but I just couldn't get it to work. So, in the end, I reached out to the uh, to the supplier through AliExpress for this particular unit, and uh, I got a bloke email me back, and uh, I explained my situation, and he emailed back, and it's through um, AliExpress Messenger, and they have a Google Translator, and I can tell you, if he was getting the same information that I was getting back from him as a translation, uh, we were we we're on totally different pages. But uh, in the end, he said, look, I'll do a video for you and show you how to do it. So he did the video, the first video. I went out there and videoed myself doing it as per the, uh, the video instructions he'd given me. And I was still not getting it to read in a radius function. Um, he did another video for me, uh, going right back to the very beginning from turning the machine on, setting up, and there was a certain sequence that you had to follow. Um, prior to actually using the unit. So you couldn't go and use the unit then try and change to a radius function. So <clears throat> I followed that sequence and bingo, I got it up. So I'm gonna leave that video, I'm gonna include that video with this video um, to show anyone who has the same trouble that I've had with that Sino unit, how to go about that. And I always get concerned about when I'm purchasing stuff overseas, particularly out of China, what that backup service is going to be like because usually you'll buy it and then you drop like a hot potato if you have issues. And uh, I was certainly very, very impressed with the uh, the way that this chap for this particular company, I'll leave a link to them down in the description through AliExpress that, uh, that he went to to get me up and going again. So I was very happy. The other thing I want to do today very quickly is uh, just show you what the resolution is like on this over five millimeters. I've got a, uh, a um, one micron indicator set up on there uh, it runs for five millimeters, so I want to show you what the drift, and there is some drift in this on these scales, just what that drift is and how much it is and how it occurs, or the pattern that it occurs in. So obviously if you're buying these budget um, DRO setups like, like this particular one, I guess would be called, you are going to expect some drift, but the drift is absolutely minimal, and I'll show you that. I'm going to try something a little bit different, I'm going to try and do a picture in picture, so I'll, I'll put the camera on the DRO, and I'll have another camera on the actual um, uh, dial indicator as we're moving and we'll see well I'll show you what that uh, what that drift is and how that works out and uh, when we do move away and we come back how well it zeroes out again from the point we start from all right guys a bit long-winded I know but uh, let's head over to the machine let's set it up and uh, let's show you how this uh, <coughs> how this unit performs this All right, guys, unfortunately, the window or the video and video on my uh, Windows Movie Maker um, isn't an option I can use. So we're going to have to look at the DRO and I'll read the numbers out to you. So this is my uh, one micron dial indicator. It has a, a total travel of five millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the, uh, the cross slide in and I'll read the, uh, the numbers out and we can see how they, uh, how they marry up with what's on the DRO. And we'll have a look at what that drift is that we have. 
and uh, possibly what the cycle is on that as well. All right, so there's our DRO. I've got that zeroed out. One thing I did forget to mention too, or I should have mentioned too, was that uh, that costing for this unit, I said it was just shy of $400. It was actually $154 American, and that worked out around about $220 Australian. So that's for the uh, for the digital readout and the two scales. So the two scales I've got, one's a metre long for the bed, and the other one's um, 320 long, I think it was, for the uh, cross slide. All right, I'm gonna go through this and we'll read out the numbers as we go. I'm gonna do this uh, in 0.2 increments. Let's see how we go. Point two. It's point four. Point six. Point eight. It's one mil. So what are we? Point oh five out. Now if I go back to what the old money is, point oh five is actually around about two tenths of a thou. One point two another shot. It's one point four. What are we at there? So we point oh one out. That works out around about four tenths of a thou. Point six, one point eight, two mil. So we're point oh two of a millimeter out, and that works out around about seven tenths of a thou on the old money. Two point two, two point four, two point six. Two point eight, two point nine, sorry, three. So point zero one, so we're back to four tenths of a thou in the old money. Three point two, three point four, three point six. 3.8, that should be 4 mil, that's bang on 4 mil. And what I'm reading on the indicator is exactly what we've got on the, uh, on the DRO. Four point eight. That should be five mil. So point oh one. So over that five mil, we're in the old money four tenths of a thou out, uh, and I'm very happy with that. As I said, this is a budget costing unit, and that waving or that variation that we see is over four millimeters. So every four millimeter chunk that I've done on this, that's what that variation is. Is uh, around about point. Two of a millimeter, or the worst case variation that I get, which is about seven tenths of a thou, and uh, I'm very, very happy with um, with that. Um, looking at the dial on the uh, on the cross slide, um, you try and marry that up. It's uh, it's less than half the thickness of the uh, of the zero line. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank this right out. So I'm cranking the saddle all the way out. It's all the way out there. We'll bring it back. I'll bring it back to the zero point and we'll see how that marries up on the DRO. Right, we're bang on zero there and we're bang on zero on the DRO. I'm gonna bring it to the five millimeters. So as far as accuracy goes, I'm very, very happy. You know, 
to work within worst case scenario on the seven tenths of a thou. Um, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Seven tenths of a thou over that four millimeters, and as I said, it's come back after the four millimeters back to zero. So we started at zero. When we got the four millimeters, we were back at zero. When we started going to the five, it just started dripping that little bit by that uh, point zero zero five. So um, that's how this sort of cycles. So worst case scenario, as I said, is about 0.02 of a millimetre during that four millimetre cycle. But uh, no, all in all, very, very happy with it. Let's have a look at another little issue that's of my own making. And we're going to have to do a little bit of repair on that. And that's some damage I've done to the uh, armoured cable on, um, on one of the, the, uh, the reed head uh, leads. So let's have a quick look at that. Eh? Okay, what you're looking at there is the... Uh cable from the reed head for the uh, for the saddle or for the x-axis and what's happened is this cable has come in over here and as I've cranked that forward I've got very little room underneath you know, it's acted like a, a bit of a shear and it's caught under that uh, side of the guard and damaged the cable now, I'm not going to be able to repair that as, as it is. You can't replace these. It'd have to be the whole reed head that would be, be uh, needed to be replaced. But I'm going to do a little fix on this to try and make it a lot better and, and uh, bring it back to some uh, robustness so that it, uh, it's going to give the protection again. So in the next video, we're going to look at uh, how I'm going to go about repairing that. So uh, I have looked right through the internet to find out if there's any information on how to repair these uh, armoured cables, and uh, there is absolutely nothing. So uh, I've got a bit of a plan for myself, so uh, we'll see how we go, but that'll be the next little job we'll do, just a short video on how we're going to repair that. I just want to show you a quick little job I did today. This is the uh, mag base that I've been using for, for quite some time, for years and years, and it's always been an issue <clears throat> in that the little spindle in here is just too small to try and crimp up. You crimp it up as hard as you can, and it's still very loose and wobbly. I can't get that any tighter. It's just uh, it was an absolute use, nuisance to work with. Um, and these little finger prongs here, when you try and tighten up the dial indicator in there, they, uh, they bite into your fingers. Not too good. So I did a little job for myself today. And uh, I'll quickly show you uh, how that's come up. So this is a Mitsutoyo uh, mag base um, unit that I've got here. And uh, unfortunately the arm that was in there didn't match up with anything. So I've made up a, a new arm and a new locking thumb wheel on here. So it's just a turning job, a milling job to make up the knuckle head, and just a quick turning job with a bit of knurling in it to uh, to create the, uh, the thumb wheel to lock it into place. And uh, I've gone over that uh, bluing material that, uh, that I've shown you once before, and it has come up an absolute treat. I'm really happy with that. So I did this off camera. Sometimes it's nice to just go into your shop and just play and just do things without having to worry about the camera being there and having to worry about things editing afterwards. But after I made this, I thought, oh, geez, that might have been a good little project to show on the camera. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm sort of very, very happy how that's come up. I'll take that off and show you what that knucklehead looks like. So that's just the knucklehead there. Bit of turning, bit of radius turning on it, bit of milling. And uh, yeah, it's come up really nice. As I said, the thumb wheel lock. I like the big thick ones too. I don't have to try and muck around trying to, <laughs> trying to get the thing up right. But uh, yeah, it's worked out really, really well. Very happy with that. So just a little project I did on the side off camera. All right, guys, as I said, the next video we're going to show when we come back is uh, how I'm going to try and repair that, uh, that armour cable. All right, we'll see you soon.